33 minutes past the hour. It is the final half hour of the week for the Jeff Santos Show, coming to you live from the South Coast here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We're going to go to Seattle, the great 206, and talk to our good friend. He's the Renaissance man of the program. He's a great musician. He's a great reporter, has uh, been out there in the streets of Seattle and going back uh, to the uh, uh, 2000 protests to get just got gazzed. Um, he's been there, man, on the front lines. He's also, of course, a great contributor to the program as the executive director of uh, Democracy Watch News. Every Friday, our good friend from the 206, Mr. MTC, joins us from uh, uh, the great progressive city of Seattle. And it's time to say hello to Mr. Mark. <laughs> I had to start with that because I just got a call. This is a rock and roll story, Jeff. I just got a call from the band that said, somebody set our rehearsal space on fire. Or at least a building where oh our rehearsal God. space is. It's been so going on quite a bit in Seattle. Seattle. That's smoke on the water. That's uh, I know, I know. That's the great tune. Time. I was we we were listening to that man when I was growing up, even before you, your time in the seventies. You know, that's deep purple. Oh, yeah. That's just great stuff. It's the first song that everybody learns in a heavy metal band because it's that's like right. so easy. It's like three chords. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's been a, it's been a crazy day. I started with the the Hartman program talking about press freedom, and then there's this whole rock and roll uh, Hall of Fame controversy going on. And then I get a call from the band talking about the place catching on fire. So I thought like, well, that's a good rock and roll story. And just like Deep Purple, we'll have to write a song about it. Because that song is about per, uh, performing in Montos in Switzerland when Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention were at this place that got set on fire. So it's actually about a concert where the, the building got set on fire. But luckily, look, nobody was injured. Uh, we didn't lose any equipment. The drummer had to, you know, brush some uh, ashes and sit off of his drum set. But the good news is that nobody was hurt, and they should be able to fix it really quickly. It was just in, in one hallway, and so we're lucky. And, you know, all's well that ends well, as Shakespeare would say. So um, all in the day's work for a rock and roll band. There you go. Rock and roll band. It's another Boston man. Uh, there you go. Uh, down in Hyannis. Uh, the, the great Boston. Crazy and that's right. in love and music. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you go. Bradley Dog's a great vocalist, man. Oh, and yeah. You know, I saw him in, before he passed mm-hmm. away uh, at, a, at a local bar in Boston, actually in Somerville. And he was on fire. He used to have a band, I think, called Beetlejuice or something like that. And it was a lot of tribute to the Beatles, but he did other things too. What a voice. Amazing. A lot of great bands from Boston. You guys have such a great music history. The Cars, oh my God. Oh, yeah. There's so many great bands that come out oh, of Boston. Aerosmith, and, you know, Jay Giles. Uh, and, you know, Aerosmith we'll have to talk rough. off air about Amy Mann of <laughs> yeah. Till Tuesday, who I used to do laundry with uh, oh, yeah. back back in the day on Kilmarnock Street in the Fenway, not many blocks oh, from man. Fenway Park. Uh, and, uh, and she would tell me about her first album. So there you go, my friend. Where is today, Amy Mann? Uh, well, you got a lot of stuff to talk about. We'll get a, well, maybe a little bit of music discussion before we go. A little Seattle Sounders talk, too. But I want to talk to you about you know what's important. And when we don't get a chance to um, listen to what other people around the world are discussing in media. You know, we have a chance to listen to the BBC or our friends at Friends 24 that come on the program. Uh, but for the most part, we don't hear international news, and which is a tragedy because they can tell us a lot about what we're not covering when they do it. So you had a chance at the UNESCO conference uh, to, to uh, hear a, a lot about world press freedom uh, and, and so forth. Give us a little uh, feel about what that was like and what were some of the subjects that they were bringing up, because this stuff relates to what doesn't get covered in America. Your thoughts, man? Yes. Uh, well, Reporters Without Borders just released their new 2022 uh, World Press Freedom Index report. And so they're ranking all of the countries in the world. The United States is now ranked 42nd in the world in terms of press freedom. And they released this on May 3rd, which is International World Press Freedom Day, as designated by the United Nations. So as executive director for Democracy Watch News, I participated in that international conference but are sponsored by UNESCO. And, yeah, we heard from a lot of media executives and government officials and NGOs about threats to press freedom around the world. 
And, and as it turns out, there's besides an increasing number of authoritarian states that are cracking down on freedom of the press, hacking has also become a major problem. And also, just the, the latest report is seven reporters have been killed in the Ukraine. 27 reporters and media workers have been killed so far this year and globally and worldwide. There are 479 media workers and journalists currently in prison. So wow. Reporters Without Borders in prison. released the, the World Press Freedom Index. We're ranked 42nd. Above us is Burkina Faso, is an African country. Um, Costa Rica is ranked at number eight, and they have a very strong tradition of protecting freedom of the press. Of course, the Scandinavian countries, uh, like always, seem to be at the top. So you had number yeah. one, Norway, number two, Denmark, and then Sweden. And then, of course, China was ranked. At- yeah, well, just have to look at video from 1989, Tiananmen Square, to understand that. Mark, you still with us? We might have lost Mark Taylor Canfield uh, here on the Jeff Santo Show. Um, let's uh, see if we can give it another 10 seconds or so. Mark, uh, if you can, uh, just ping me on uh, on text, and I'll uh, try to give you a uh, You can call back if you want. Um, again, 772-223-2362. Um, Mark, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? All right, there you go. Concern there, man. I thought you we uh, we had lost you in the, in the in the fog of Seattle. Go right ahead, man. Well, so uh, as far as the United States is concerned, we're ranked forty second, which is largely due to corporate media monopolies. So, according to Reporters Without Borders, there are many popular outlets uh, for news that are owned by only a small handful of wealthy individuals. So, in a diverse global media landscape, local news has declined significantly, and also there is disinformation that's been affecting American society as and has created an atmosphere where citizens no longer know who to trust. So there's also online harassment, particularly towards women and people of color. It's also a serious issue for journalists and can impact their quality of life and safety. So there you go. That's what the the report was from Reporters Without Borders. It was delivered as part of World Press Freedom Day as designated by the United Nations. And there were uh, dozens of, of nations involved. Some of them have really great reputations in terms of protecting freedom of the press. I mentioned Costa Rica, which has a really long tradition of freedom of the press, which is very rare, of course, in Central America. But we have a lot of work to do. And what, I, what I've been saying in the media is that we really need to support nonprofits because as an executive director for a nonprofit, Democracy Watch News, I know that there are a lot of great people out there, like Documented. They're a New York news organization that devotes themselves mainly to news about immigration and immigrants and immigrants' rights. So there you go. That's a perfect example of a nonprofit. It's not owned by a corporation. And as long as organizations like that can get the grant funding and, you know, the, the support from the public that they deserve, I think there could be a renaissance for media in the United States. And I saw that at the International Online News um, Network uh, Symposium and also the Online Journalism, the International Symposium on Online Journalism. They all... Uh, featured nonprofits that have just started within the last few years, some of them focusing on uh, news that uh, uh, involves and affects indigenous people, um, news that affects minorities around the world uh, in, in underrepresented populations. So that is a new thing, and I think that that really could change the media landscape in the United States if people could finally get it through their heads that, number one, we don't have the most press freedom in the world. There are 41 other countries that have more press freedom than we have, and it's time for every editor, every journalist, every publisher and producer to get on the bandwagon and start talking about press freedom every day, somewhere, to someone, in order to, to light those fires and keep it burning, because otherwise this is going to be swept under the rug by the corporate media. They don't want to talk about it. You're not going to hear that we're ranked 42nd in the world from CNN. You're not going to hear that from any of the major news uh, organizations. You're only going to hear that in independent news. And honestly, Jeff, even in progressive and independent media, I have a hard time sometimes getting this information out. So thank you very much for allowing us to uh, present this information on your program because you know most of the world doesn't know about it. Uh, in the United States, we're ignorant to these issues. In the rest of the world, they look at us as like a sort of up and coming and you know sort of semi-failed democracy at this point, and we don't even know it, which is really sad. It shows our own ignorance.
in terms of international relations. Well, I, I know you're a fan of microbrews, and it brings me back to the time when I was in a pub in London, and an Australian uh, uh, ended up being a good friend of mine for a while, uh, at least when I was traveling around, and a couple of years after that. And he said to me, he goes, you know, your democracy died when Kennedy was killed. This is 1988 at the time. And uh, if you think about it, uh, you know, a few years later, Vietnam would, would destroy the New Deal and everything else. He probably wasn't that far-fetched. And again, this is somebody who, who loves America, who had spent time here uh, visiting, as many Aussies who travel quite a bit uh, do. And, you know, we have a lot to learn. And, and, and America, I was just talking about this, and we're going to bring in a couple of callers here uh, in a second, because it connects to the dots of our democracy. And frankly, after what happened the what's that's what's at stake man and never mind all the things that are in the republican handbook you know they're 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 on page five right now but he's got a long way to go and you know they they could very easily next next group lgbtq the next group after that interracial marriage i mean it goes on and on mark and we're going to take a call but go ahead a lot of conservative billionaires own media as well which is a problem and we yeah. talked about that on tom's show today it's a major problem i i tried to talk to tom styers about this and other wealthy people please invest your money in progressive media and it doesn't seem to be happening and now we have mitt romney's equity fund taking over uh, clear channel and oh my gosh you know people don't understand that the media game a lot of it is a corporate sort of gamble uh and it involves a lot of very wealthy people who just basically own the media and get to tell you what to think. And until we break through that, we're also going to have a problem politically because people in a lot of parts of the country, especially very rural areas, are pretty ignorant and un- uninformed or misinformed, actually, about a lot of what's going on in the rest of the world. And until we can bridge that gap and we have, you know, conservatives owning most of the media and most of the part, most of the country, you know, you see that map, right? There's the left coast with Washington, Oregon and California, a little bit of help from Nevada and Montana, but Idaho is definitely, you know, a, a red state. And then you have to go all the way to the northeast, you know, with a few ex- ex- uh, exceptions in the middle of the country, in the north, in the Midwest, in northern Midwest. Yeah, Wisconsin, but other than that, Minnesota, you have to go all the way Illinois, to yeah, New York, yeah. Massachusetts, New Jersey, in Vermont, in order to find, you know, a similar kind of politics. And somehow we've got, we've got to bridge a gap here in this country because there's so much polarization going on, and people talk about that in journalism too, the polarization of journalism that's happening. And Fox News is a perfect example of that. You know, they're just there to stir up trouble. That's their whole purpose for being, the whole raison d'etre, as the, as the French would say, is just to, you know, to be a fly in the ointment and cause chaos. And I'm really tired of that. You know, people in the United States need to be proactive consumers of media instead of passive, you know, um, people being programmed, you know, by other people's propaganda. Well, we need we need to set up a structure that makes that makes sense, and these and they have these representatives uh, actually spend time in the community, uh, as our good friend uh, Steve was talking about earlier with RVK. Uh, I want to take a quick call from uh, our good friend Joe in Arizona, uh, you know, who I think has uh, some things to say about things that we need in our society, including uh, you know the ability to have more independent media. Joe, you're next with Mark Taylor Canfield here on the Jeff Santo Show. Go right ahead, sir. Hey, Mark. Hey, Jeff. Um, we cheated. Uh, all the country. All, you know, when you look at the um, counties, 3,000 plus counties in uh, the United States, it looks like a Verizon phone coverage map. It's red. And that's cheated. <laughs> well said. And, yeah. And, and the problem with that is that, I, you know, I, I have ridden all, all over parts of this country, and every single red county or township or something that I go through, guess what? That place sucks. It, there is nothing out there. There's nothing going on in those communities. They have suspect health care, suspect school funding, suspect jobs. You, there is no, you can't even find a, uh, under, you know, a, a, a restaurant that's open because the owner probably has to go work part-time at the uh, Archer Daniels Midland, uh, you know, just um, farm just community a big brother yeah and then they go and commoditize it and turn it into a scarce commodity uh and and you know i I think that that's the problem with what's going on is that we just and that's the problem why jeff you're you're so rare in this in this kind of landscape and you shouldn't be because you are actually speaking for 
the majority, a super majority of the people. It's just that the person that runs this party, uh, that, that, that collective entity, it's funded by Republican money. These guys spend eight out of 10 days dialing for dollars. And there's only six companies that run and, you know, 90% of what we hear in the media. And it's been a corporate takeover. One out of every four houses was bought by, uh, like, BlackRock. The Koch brothers took a heavy turn. Bill Gates is now the largest landowner in the United States. Do you, does anybody see a trend here? We do. Yeah. The progressives yeah. do. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you're 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 you're, uh, you're speaking truth to power, and you're making it very clear what we're up against, uh, Joe. And and Mark, if you want to add in here, uh, you know, this is this is the stuff that you know the world. Uh, press freedom conference was was discussing i mean when we're you know 46 or whatever the number was you know compared to other countries i mean i mean a small country in the middle of of uh central america with dictators like in in, in uh, places like guatemala and honduras you know are able to do this and 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 we're 46th i mean that's embarrassing mark well, Costa Rica has actually had a more, much more democratic tradition than those countries that you just spoke about. But yes, I mean it's a it's a censorship in the media that happens here, and it's not a state-owned media; it's a corporate-owned media. So I, as a journalist, can tell you there are certain specific stories. One being we're ranked 42nd in the world on the World Press Freedom Index uh, report that won't get reported by corporate news media. From number one, it undermines their own credibility as U.S. media, so they're not going to tell you about that. It's kind of like a used car dealer telling you that, yeah, they've actually been sued three times for, you know, bogus deals. So they're not going to tell you, of course. And also, uh, it's just not a part of the agenda in the United States to question the media because the media controls everything here, whether it's pop culture with the bands that become popular. I mean, not, not so much uh, with some bands like, say, the Foo Fighters or Pearl Jam, which are Pearl Jam is actually out there on a tour right now, by the way. But um, but with other bands, yeah, you know, a lot of the newer bands, they're very much controlled by commercial interests. And I think, you know, that's just part of the game in the United States. Some people in, in France would tell me, some of my friends there would say, uh, you know, it, what's, what's America about? It's about money. That, that's right. their attitude about our country. If you have the money, you can do whatever you want. And we've well, got I mean, to change the, the that. The former president is a great democratic. example of that. You know, I mean, I mean, what is he's all about? I mean, the guy will go bankrupt, will destroy casinos in New Jersey, and will just move on. I mean, that's just what it is. Unfortunately, there are too many people in both parties who replicate that. Uh, Joe, I uh, appreciate your call, man, and I appreciate your kind words. We're trying to do the right thing here, and uh, and we hope to get bigger someday too um hopefully that will be absolutely yeah best talk show in the united states go ahead joe hey oh i was just gonna say uh yeah have a good one but i was gonna you know just to pitch in and i'll leave on this note um assange is locked up for um you know when we talk about like uh, open free press and what he was reporting on you know we we've already passed snip tests uh, on that, but you know now we'll see what happens with the leaked papers in the Roe versus Wade uh, conversation because that's somebody who leaked info as well. Will they be treated hey, like you know, that? Was really important that you mentioned um, Assange though, because in in reality that's an issue that also doesn't get covered much in the United States. But we have to make a decision whether whistleblowers who release information in the public interest are friends or enemies. And I think, you know, a lot of us b- believe that they're friends, but there are those in power who think they're, they're enemies. And that n- needs to change. We need to have much less, uh, we need to have actually a federal shield law for journalists, by the way. Yeah. And, and that's mm-hmm. one thing that wasn't mentioned during the uh, UNESCO conferences that I wish I had heard. There was a lot of political posturing there by political figures, but in reality, we need in the United States a federal shield law. Some states have them, but in most states, if you refuse to... If you refuse to give your sources away, if you re- refuse to give information about your sources in a criminal case, they can throw you in jail. And there are journalists who are in jail right now in the United States because of that. And we're trained, actually, to be able to just, okay, make that decision. I would rather go to jail than um, give up confidentiality, you know, and uh, with my source. So there you go. That's what we're trained to do. We're trained to go to jail if we have to. And that's exactly. the United States, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it that's the reality. Hey, today. Joe, thank you, my friend. we got to run, my man, but uh, have, have a good, have a great weekend. weekend. Thank you. Uh, let's get to, quickly to Minnesota before we get into some Seattle Sounder talks. Uh, go to see John and Minneapolis. You're next with MTC. How you doing, John? I'm fine. How are you? 
Good, good. What's on I'm your fine. mind before we roll? <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know. In 10 seconds, how can I, what can I say about <laughs> well, you got a minute. the lack you got a of minute. press freedom? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, well, Jamaica's ahead of us. Costa Rica's ahead of us. You know, um, and then, of course, those Scandinavian countries have are their social democracies. So there must be something, you know, about having a social democracy and having more press freedom. Uh, yeah, they go hand the in two, hand, uh, Probably hand in, you know, they probably go hand in hand. So, you know, what we have is fascism here. We have a coming together well, of corporate power, it's not there media. yet, but it's getting there. Yeah. Uh, no, it, I, I, actually it is. If we're 42nd, you know, yeah, and I mean, most of the media is owned by corporations, that what more true. can you say? It's yeah. been that way for 40, 50 years now. It just gets worse well, every we'll year. We'll call so. it fascism anyway, light yeah. anyways. But I think, I think you're, you're, you're well, making a good it, point. Yeah, they, they're... They're not like uh, now, you know, they're not lining pe- journalists up and shooting them in the head or dropping them out of planes like in, uh, you know, Chile or yeah. wherever. Or chopping but them up like in Saudi Arabia. We're getting Arabia. there, you know, yeah. or whatever. And, uh, you know, we're getting there. That's why it's, um, you know what, John, it's a serious part of the point issue. is that part of, back in the, in the year 2010, we were ranked 19th in the world, and we have steadily declined since then. So I think we that's part of the We from 19th to 46? Here. Wow. Yeah, yes, we have constantly been slipping on the World Press Freedom Index. It's something that our own media, uh, news media, won't cover, though. So how do you affect change? Yeah. Whenever I've briefed members of Congress, none of them have been aware of these facts, even though Reporters Without Borders holds a, an event every year at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C. and releases this report. It's also a part of the UNESCO's international conference, you know, which, you know, U.S. media would want to get more involved with, they could. Um, but instead, you know, I ended up interacting with a lot of uh, reporters from other news agencies around the world who are much more aware of these issues. So there you go. It, you know, we slipped, and that's my job as a reporter to report that. And if other you reporters agree. don't want to do that and don't see that as part of their job, then I really have to question the level and the and the state of American journalism at this point. Yeah. They're not really tell, speaking truth to power. John, thank you. Have yourself a great weekend. Uh, MTC, we just got a few seconds here, man. Uh, Seattle Sounders uh, kicking some butt. Um, I know the Mariners are too. And uh, lastly, uh, Pearl Jam and, and, and Foo Fighters may be coming together. Uh, I got 30 seconds. You can have it. Oh, well, the Seattle Sounders did this historic thing. They won the North American and Central American Championship League, which is unheard of. American teams never have been able to do that. So Seattle has set the standard for soccer in the United States. It's a new era. Uh, my friends in the Marshall Law Band, uh, D- MC Marshall Hugh, performed during that championship bout, and it was incredible. It was 69,000 people showed up at Lumen Field in Seattle to see it. So soccer has a brand new era in the United States and it's being introduced by the city of Seattle. And yeah, Pearl Jam is out there touring and I hope they do a free stay in Seattle soon because we love them. Check out my videos at YouTube. I have a song there called Mother Freedom you can listen to. See you, Jeff. Have Thank you, weekend. Mark. Uh, Eddie Vetter, keep on fighting for us, man. You rock and you need to lead the way too on this uh, situation with uh, fascism coming uh, courtesy of our friends in the Republican Party. So keep out there. Thank you, Mark. I want to thank Ron Kreider for producing this broadcast. Thank you all, folks, for calling in today. Great, great show. Thanks to great callers. Steven, to get better. Go Red Sox, Bruins, Celtics in the playoff run. Keep on fighting, folks. Have yourself a great weekend. My name is Jeff Santos, and right now it's my time to say I gotta go.